So you've packaged your DNA into a virus and you're ready to infect your cells. But how many viral particles are required for 100% infection? In this video, we'll explain the concept of multiplicity of infection, or MOI, and take you through how to determine the best MOI for your experiment. In a nutshell, MOI is the ratio of infectious agents to infection targets. In many cases, it is the ratio of viral particles to target cells in a defined space such as a cell culture well. For example, if you add 10 million viruses to 1 million cells, you'd have an MOI of 10 and an average probability of 10 viral particles infecting one cell. Let's do a quick sample calculation. Let's say you'd like to achieve an MOI of 10. If your virus titer is 1 times 10 to the 6 infection units per mil, and you are delivering to 1 times 10 to the 5 cells, what volume of virus will you need for your project? You will need 1 mil of virus. So, based on this simple definition of MOI, you would expect that if your MOI was 1, then each cell would be infected by 1 virus. But the reality is not as simple. Why? Imagine yourself throwing 100 tennis balls into a room that has 100 buckets. Theoretically, there is one ball for every bucket. But in reality, the chance of every bucket getting one ball is very low. There are other factors to consider, such as do the buckets have backboards that would make it easier to make the shot. Similarly, there are factors that can affect how easily viruses can infect their target cells, such as the current state of your cell line, whether it is dividing or non-dividing, the characteristics of the virus, whether it is a lentivirus or adenovirus, the transduction efficiency, and your application, whether you are transducing a packaging cell line for virus production or a stable cell line for protein production. For example, if the cell is in a non-dividing state, a higher MOI may be needed to achieve optimal transduction efficiency. This is the case when infecting neuronal cells, such as SHSY5Y, with lentiviruses for gene delivery, where a much higher MOI of 10 to 50 can be required. On the other hand, when it comes to infecting insect cells, such as SF9 cells with baculovirus for viral production, a low MOI of less than 1 is typically recommended. This is because passaging baculovirus at higher MOIs increases the possibility of transferring large amounts of defective, non-infectious viruses. AAV, in contrast, requires MOIs in the range of 10,000 to 500,000. Essentially, if the MOI is too high, it can cause cytotoxicity or other undesired effects. If the MOI is too low, it will not achieve 100% infection. So. How do you determine the optimal MOI for your experiment? Simply perform a pilot experiment using a reporter virus on your target cell line. For example, using a GFP lentivirus, design a range of MOIs to use. Let's say, six conditions ranging from MOIs of 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, and 30. It is typically better to test a lower MOI range to avoid cytotoxicity at the higher MOIs. A good starting point would be to reference commonly used MOIs for cancer cells and devise the range around a suggested MOI. After you have infected your cells, allow the appropriate time to pass before evaluating the fluorescence. For lentiviruses, this is generally 48 to 72 hours post-infection. Next, record the fluorescence at the various MOIs to determine your transduced cell percentage. Select the minimum MOI at which all the cells are expressing the transgene. Here is an example of what your results may look like. In this case, a minimum MOI of 10 is required for 100% infection of the target cells. If your cells are naturally harder to transduce, there are transduction enhancers such as polybrine or our viral max transduction enhancers to increase infectivity performance. We hope you found this video helpful in determining the optimal conditions for transduction of your virus to your target cells. At ABM, we offer a ready-to-use collection of lenti, AAV, adeno, 
and retroviruses for any human, mouse, and rat gene. Browse our collection of tools and resources for gene expression today.